Hi, this is Rob from SeeHowToDoIt.com. Before we start the video, we'd like to thank you for watching. We'd also like to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share on social media, and visit us at SeeHowToDoIt.com. Today we're going to show you how to rewire your swamp cooler to be able to connect it to a thermostat. So let's get started. First, we'll show you the thermostat here, the one we'll be installing. This is by Dial. It has a lot of benefits to it. You could run the cooler on fan only. You could also have it set before the swamp cooler comes on. It will actually prime your media or pads. It will run the pump for about two minutes. That way you're not going to be blowing in dust to the space. That's a really good feature. And you could uh, also have it set for fan low or fan high if you have a variable speed unit. And you could also adjust the temperatures so that way once it achieves the temperature it will shut off versus having the swamp cooler run and run and run and then make the space too cold if it's something like your house and you know overnight it comes to temperature and you just make it freezing so we're going to show you how to wire this and if you're not comfortable with uh, electrical you might want to ask somebody who can help you or have an electrician do it it's pretty simple but you definitely want to be careful because you could start a fire if you don't do it right Okay, since every swamp cooler is different, you're going to have to figure out where your wiring is. In this one, it happens to be in the front. Yours might possibly be inside in a box. The main reason we're going to be replacing this, this is the control board, and pretty much some of the buttons are, you know, broken over here. So we're going to rewire all this so it's on the thermostat. So pretty much find where your... Uh, all your wiring is go ahead and take it apart like i said every swamp cooler is going to be different so we're going to go ahead and pull this stuff up, out over here and uh we're going to go ahead and clip actually just pull these out because these are on clips over here and whatever is not on a clip we'll go ahead and uh cut and over here we we'll here and our ground wires over here these are screwed in so we're going to go ahead and unscrew those okay we'll go ahead and get a screwdriver and we'll unscrew that go ahead and get our grounds off that's on there So now we have it all disconnected over here. And pretty much, it's pretty straightforward. This is our incoming power over here. And over here, we know this is for our motor because our motor is variable speed. Our red is for the low speed right here. Our black is for the high speed. This is our ground right here. This is our common. And that only leaves one other wire. This is for our pump. So this is our ground. This is our hot and this is our comet over here. So now we're ready to cut these off. We'll go because we're going to actually wire these on with uh, wire nuts. So we'll go ahead and clip these off here. We're going to do the same with our power wire. For now, we're going to leave on the ground wire because we might actually uh, screw it to the side of the machine here. So we'll go ahead and clip these. Right, so now we're ready to prep it for the thermostat. As far as materials go, there's not much that you're going to need in materials. We're going to actually mount the thermostat on an electrical box over here. And we're going to also use some of these slip connectors over here. So when we drill through the side, we're going to put this in here so that way when the swamp cooler vibrates, none of the wires will get frayed away. We'll show you that in just a little bit once we get started here. Go ahead and locate where you want to mount your swamp cooler thermostat. You're going to probably want to mount it where your wires are going to be long enough on this insulation. We're going to go right over here and we're going to drill through the side of it with this drill bit. And then we're going to use a unibit to make the hole bigger so we could have the sleeve in there and be able to slide it in. And because I make my videos as short as possible, it's pretty much straightforward how to drill into the unit and, you know, using a unibit. So we're not going to show any of that. So we're going to go ahead and make the hole and then we'll be on to the next step. All right, we've went ahead and drilled our hole out over here, 
and we're going to go ahead and insert the sleeve in. Just take your time and drill out the hole. You don't want to go too big, otherwise you have to get a bigger sleeve. And the purpose of this is it'll protect the wiring. And you can see this way when you put the wiring through here, as the swamp cooler vibrates, it's not going to rub against here and end up damaging your wiring. So the next we're going to go ahead and our electrical box has a hole over here. If yours doesn't, you'll have to drill it out for one. And if it has any of the holes on the bottom, you might want to use that for your incoming power or fill it with the caps that come with it. So we're going to go ahead and mount our box over here. And this is pretty much straightforward too, so we're not going to show that to save time in the video. Okay, our box is now mounted. So we're good there. And uh, depending upon what kind of box you have, your incoming power wire, you might be able to just put in the wire and then silicone it in, or you might even have to get some kind of clamp to hold it in. On this one, we're going to actually sil silicone it in, so we're going to go ahead and feed our wire through here, and this is our power wire, and then we'll go ahead and silicone it in at the bottom. That'll take care of it, and that'll hold it in place here. So that takes care of our power wire. Like I said, the small steps, siliconing it in, we're not going to show that because all of our videos are to the point, no blah, blah, blah. That way it saves time and you only see what you need to see to be able to do the install. All right, now we're ready to start doing our wiring and to try to make this as straightforward as possible. We're going to show you on this computer screen over here. And uh, pretty much we have right over here our black wire, which is our power wire, which you're going to find right over here on your swamp clear thermostat. You can see this is a black wire over here. You can have your white wire here, which is your common and here's your white wire right over here. And then from there, you're gonna have your motor and uh, pump. Right over here, you're gonna have your orange and black stripe, which hopefully it's, you're able to see this. This is the orange and black stripe right over here. Like I said before, your red is your lower speed. Here's your red wire right over here. And then your black is gonna be your high speed, which you're gonna connect on that one will be the yellow black stripe which this is the yellow black stripe right over here. So that's gonna be your high speed. So that's pretty much straightforward. And if you weren't sure which was your pump, if you don't have a variable speed motor, you could trace down your pump, follow the wire all the way to the pump and follow the wire all the way to your motor. That way you're gonna know which is which. But if you have a variable speed motor, it's gonna be straightforward. It's gonna have a red wire, and your red wire is gonna be your low speed more than likely. Chances are it won't be any other color than red. So we're trying to make this as straightforward as possible to be able to show you on this diagram. Now we're gonna go back out there and get everything connected. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and feed our wiring from our pump and also our motor through here. We'll go ahead and feed that through there. And now that we have that done, we're ready to go ahead and wire up our thermostat. So we're going to need some wire nuts, and you're going to use wire nuts according to the size of uh, what wires you have here. We're going to go ahead and do all of our ground wires here first. So that's all of our greens. This might be a little bit hard to see here because the space is definitely tight. But that's why we showed you on the other screen what needs to be done. So we'll go ahead and get all of our grounds done. That's our grounds over here, so we're going to go ahead and put a wire nut on that. And you want everything to do with the electrical always being tight, because if anything is loose, it could very well catch fire. So we're going to go ahead and get this on as tight as possible, and we'll go on to the next wire. Next, we're going to go ahead and start wiring in our thermostat. We're going to do all the common wires, which... We already talked about our white is our common, our thermostat, and on your power wire, either one is good for the common, and both are white for our pump and also for our motor, so these are our common for that. So we're going to go ahead and put these together here. Like I said, the more wiring it gets tight, so if you're not comfortable with this, you might have to have somebody help you who is, because you definitely want all this tight, because any loose wiring, you could very well start a fire. So this, this is the most critical step of it all here. So we're, that's good there. We're gonna go ahead and put on our wire nut. And you're gonna to wanna to get that as tight as possible. 
Now we're going to go ahead and do our hot wire, which we talked about. That's the black on the thermostat, and that's our other wire on the power cord. So we'll go ahead and wire another those together. What I mean by tight is you want to get this as tight as possible and pull on it, make sure it doesn't pop off. So now we're going to go ahead and do the next wire. All right, and make sure you know which wires are which. Like, I know this is for my motor. This is my low speed, the red, and the black is the high speed. And we're going to connect the high speed first. That is the yellow with the black stripe over here. So we're going to go ahead and connect that to the black wire. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because the space is tight, but that's why I showed that other diagram. So this is just connecting the wires. So that's good there. Now we're going to go ahead and do our low speed, which is our red wire here. We'll go ahead and connect it to the red. Okay, that's good there. And now we're ready for the pump. Go ahead and wire up our pump now, which is our orange and black wire. And once you get all these wire nuts on, some people like to go ahead and tape them. It's up to you. It's a matter of preference. It's going to be in a box, so it really doesn't make too much of a difference. The main thing is you want everything with the wire nuts all nice and tight. You don't want anything ever be able to come loose, because once the wiring becomes loose, that's where you can start a fire. So now that we have all this done, we're going to go ahead and tuck in all these wires and then mount our box. Or, I'm sorry, not our box, our thermostat here. Okay, everything's mounted, everything's all wired up. Now we're ready to test our cooler. As you can see, it's lit up over here. And this is our settings. You can go temperature up, temperature down over here. And on the inside, you could have fan and pump, or you could go fan only, system off all the way over here, fan low, fan high. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the system. First, we're gonna pull off our swamp cooler doors so we could uh, show you that the pump will start. And uh, when you do turn on the system, the pump is going to go for about two minutes to prime all the pads. That way, when the motor turns on, you're not going to be blowing any dust into this space. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn this on to fan on high. And as you can see over here, this has started our pump. So this is going to go for about two minutes. And after the two minutes is on, your fan will click in. And we'll come back to this once that happens. Okay, our two minutes is up. It's went ahead and primed the pads for two minutes, and right now the fan came out on the high speed. If you wanted to go ahead and switch it to the low, low speed, go ahead and switch it there. And as you heard, it slowed down. Right now it's in the low speed, and uh, pretty much you can set the temperature to whatever temperature you want, and you know, depending upon what your conditions are, once it comes to temperature, it'll go ahead and shut off the swamp cooler. And then once it gets warmer, it'll come back on. It will first prime your pads and then uh, the motor will come on. That way you're not going to be blowing any dust into the space. And uh, we also have pretty much tutorials on all phases of swamp cooler repair. So any of them you can find on our page. And uh, we're also going to go ahead and get a strap, which I don't have one right now. We're going to go ahead and strap this down. The main thing is you want to be really careful when it comes to electrical because any loose connections or things that are not done right could very well start a fire. So you want to have all that done right, get it done by somebody who knows how to do it if you don't know how to do it. Once again, we'd like to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share on social media. And visit us at seehowtodoit.com. Thank you.